Our program today is going to be fairly gentle, um, but if there's anything that your body doesn't want to do, just don't do it. That's fine. Your body's the boss, not me. Please listen to your body. And, uh, and let's get started. So, first thing that we want to do is sit up straight. And I don't mean sit up straight like your mom said, sit up straight. <laughs> I mean, just find a good posture with your spine in its natural alignment. So then let your eyes close. And just kind of feel how it is to be in your body today. So we're moving from our intellectual awareness to a sensory awareness. An awareness that tends to atrophy in the way that we live our modern lives. We do lots of things to feed the intellect, but not necessarily so much to feed our sensory awareness. So that through this practice you begin to learn how to listen to your body and the intelligence that's inherent in your body. Begin to feel the chair supporting your weight. Letting your shoulders settle away from your ears and your arms and hands settle on your lap. Let your collarbones broaden and your opening from your heart. Creating space for the breath. Softening your belly. Making room for the diaphragm to drop into your belly. All the way down into the bowl of your pelvis. Relax your face. Unhinging your jaw. Across the bridge of your nose, your upper cheeks, all around the eyes. Your eyelids are soft. Temples. And all across your forehead. especially eyebrow center, letting all those worry lines melt away. Corners of your eyes, the corners of your mouth soft. Inside, the root of your tongue is soft. you become aware of the breath moving through the nostrils, the sinuses, all the way down into the chest. One of the oldest forms of meditation is what they now call anapanasati, which is simply awareness of breath. Letting the breath be the anchor that holds you in the moment. Can you simply observe the breath without trying to change the breath? Your belly softly expanding and contracting.
Create a sense of space around your heart. And allow the breath to expand into that space. And the Buddhists like to say the thousand times you'll be distracted. And a thousand times you come back. And that's the practice. So if your mind wanders from the breath, just come back to the sensation of your body breathing. And begin to have the sense that your whole body is breathing. Every cell in your body breathing. Notice how this feels. And so we begin to add some movement to the breath. As you softly let your eyes open and slide forward on your chair, just sit on the front third of your chair seat, feet flat on the floor. Let your arms just hang down out of your shoulders. And as you breathe in, the arms rise. And your spine lengthens. And exhale back to the heart. As the breath naturally returns, open to receive it. Lengthening with the breath. And exhale. Just begin to find your own breath rhythm. Even waiting till the breath comes in, pausing on empty, maybe pausing on full. Exhaling as the hands release. And just flow, breath and movement. Let your shoulders settle completely at the end of each cycle. And let's begin to add some little variations as we hands meet above your head. Exhale down into goddess arms. Inhale back up. Palms together, exhale, thumbs to the nape of your neck, gently squeezing thumbs toward each other. Inhaling up and exhaling back to the heart. And again, inhaling all the way up. Palms together, but then exhale, goddess, opening your chest. Inhaling up and exhale, Thumbs to the nape of the neck. Squeeze the elbows toward each other gently. Inhale up. Exhale back to the heart. Let's go around one more time just like that. Inhale. And exhale. Open your heart. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale, now another variation. We inhale up and just come to that cactus pose so the elbows are straight line, elbow to elbow. And let's inhale here and exhale, rotating to your right. Look right, inhale back to center. Exhale left, looking back. Inhale, settling the shoulders, exhale. Inhale, and exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, now inhale both arms all the way up, and then to exhale, hand coming across to the opposite knee, grabbing the chair behind you, 
Grounding equally on both sit bones, shoulders away from your ears, chest open. And let's wake up the neck, shoulders a little bit, dropping your chin as you exhale. Inhale, looking up to look over the front shoulder. And exhale, back to the breast bone and inhale, look back. And just flow a few more times, finding your own rhythm here. Shoulders settling each time. And the next time you're looking forward, just pause there. Rotating from your heart back, rotating from the crown of your head, even the back of your head to look over the front shoulder. Just keeping your head in line with the rest of your spine. next in breath brings the arms up again getting long and on exhale move into that space rotating from the heart dropping the shoulders back into the body and just getting rid of anything that's not helping you be in the posture noticing any resistance in your sh shoulders your waist and then again begin dropping your chin down and rolling up to look over the front shoulder just flowing easy with the breath finding your own rhythm Just move in a way that feels good for you. And the next time your chin faces forward, again, open your chest, get tall, and just sit with it for a couple of breaths. On your next inhale, bring the arms up. And get tall again. Exhale back to goddess. And let's inhale right here, opening the chest, and exhale, bring the forearms, elbows together. Again, start to find your own rhythm with the breath. Inhale and open. And exhale. Inhale, so there's a little bit of cat-cow movement here. I'm rounding and opening between the shoulder blades, focusing on the upper spine, the upper thoracic spine. And a little bit of a back bend, folding the spine into the body behind the heart here, squeezing the shoulder blades towards each other a little. And just flow. And this time as the hands come back, just drop your hands to your knees and we'll continue with that cat-cow movement. Inhale, rolling the collarbones up. Exhale, sliding back. Inhale, bring the hands back to your hips. Squeezing the shoulder blades toward each other. Exhale, sliding out to your knees. Inhale, open it up. And exhale. Still focusing on what you feel. And just flow again with breath. Inhaling. Exhaling. And for some of you that are a little more experienced, as you exhale, draw your belly in toward the spine a little more, using that nice banda. never forcing maybe even finding your ujjayi breath and using that breath sound as a focal point point. 
And then just coming back to neutral spine this time. And just for a moment, notice how you feel already. So the next time you breathe in, just let your right arm rise. And exhale over and we'll just let it fall and down. And now the other arm rises. And then exhale over. Keep both sit bones grounded equally. Inhale up. And exhale. Maybe the stretch going a little deeper each time as the body allows. Just again flowing with breath. So this time, I'm going to take, take your left hand across to the right knee, inhale up, and just exhale over. And again, resettle, both sit bones grounded. Release your shoulders away from the ears as you lengthen out of the hip through the waist, and through those bottom ribs, opening those ribs to the breath up through the upper ribs and the shoulder up into the arm and all the way to the fingers turning your gaze looking to your right keeping the shoulders relaxed and then inhale up and release your arm and exhale Just let both sides balance out for a minute before we take the deep stretch on the second side. Noticing the difference between the two sides of your body. And then go ahead and take the right hand to the left knee. Inhale up and exhale over. And again, sinking that left sit bone back into your chair. Just checking in. Have you picked up any tension in your face, the back of your neck and the shoulders? Anything in the hips and waist? Just send the breath there. Letting the breath act like a solvent, melting. Sending it away with the exhales. And then again, inhale up. And exhale the arm down. Just sitting with it. Feeling what it is to be alive in your body at this moment. And so let's inhale both arms up. Exhaling your right knee to your chest. Keeping the spine long, don't round over the leg. And then just open it up to your right, looking left. And then exhale, switching hands, holding the top of your shin. And then inhale, the legs straight, kicking out through the heel, toes point back toward you, shoulders away from your ears. And the exhale brings it back to your chest. And then inhale. Exhale, second leg. Bring it in, shoulders away from your ears. Inhale, open it up, looking right, stretching left. And then exhale as you reverse it. Inhale, holding the back of your leg, heel out, toes back. And exhale, back to your chest. So let's make it flow just a little more. Inhale. 
exhale right knee inhale open right look left exhale reverse inhale heel out exhale hug your knee again and inhale and exhale and inhale exhale and inhale exhale now we're just getting good let's keep it going breath and movement which is the original definition of vinyasa yoga exhaling into the twist Inhaling out through the heel. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale back to the heart. Just closing your eyes for a moment. Feeling that practice resonating everywhere in your body. Especially in the low back and hips. How are you breathing? How can you open even more to receive this practice? And let's go ahead and work on the hamstrings a little more, stretching out the right leg. So sit tall, bending at the hips, not the waist. Take a deep breath and exhale. Heel out, toes back. Just slide down until your body says that's good. And we'll just come up loosening it up a little bit more now shoulders relaxed exhale bending at the hips maybe going a little further each time the goal is to stretch the hamstrings not to grab your foot too many times I pe hear people say I can't touch my toes I can never do yoga but the goal isn't to touch your toes the goal is to stretch and open your body so go where your body lets you go as we hold the posture a little bit. The great teacher of teachers, Krishnamacharya, would always emphasize opening the back to breath whenever we're in a forward fold like this. We don't pay enough attention to the back body and how it breathes. In fact, your lung capacity, they say, is 60% in your back area. So let those ribs expand. Maybe sliding down a little more as the hamstring releases, but don't force it. Now please press your sit bones back into the chair. Use your core to draw the hands back to the body and bring the leg back under you. And just sit with that for a breath or two. Feeling the difference between your two legs. Now let's go ahead and stretch the other side. Heel out, toes back. Turn your navel toward your big toe a little bit. Take a breath in and then exhale. Maybe drawing your belly in toward the spine a little as you come down. As the breath returns, sliding back up. The movement comes from down here, not from your back. Exhale, just folding at the hips. Inhale. 
and then exhale. This time we'll hold it, but keep breathing. Don't hold the breath. Taking a deep breath. On exhale, rotate the floor of your pelvis behind you a little more. Creating a little more of what they call an anterior pelvic tilt. And again, open your back to breath. If at any point the pose is too long for you, just go ahead and release and come back out. It's okay. Again, please listen to your body. Inhale back up. And with your hands on your knees, we're just going to release all of that nice and slowly, making some nice hip circles. Working through the middle of your spine. Stretching your side ribs out to the side, your solar plexus forward, middle of your back, back. And as you reach the center, pause for a moment and slowly start the other direction. the center this time come back to start and we'll thread the needle a little bit and we'll take a deep breath with the left arm reaching back and exhale reach under your right arm get your elbow out of the way inhale and open up and let your gaze follow your fingertips inhale and open it up and exhale and reach and just flow and one more on this side and exhale and let's switch right arm reaching back looking back Exhale, reach under. Inhale, opening it up. And exhale, reach under. But just like all of the others, find your own rhythm. Stretch where your body needs to stretch. It doesn't have to look exactly like what I'm doing. We're not posing for the cover of Yoga Journal. <laughs> Exhale, one more, reach under, and back to neutral spine. So, I'm going to do another version of what we just did. Take the left hand, just bring it across your lap, just above the knees. Let your right hand dangle down. And as you breathe in, open it up and look up. And exhale, release it down. And inhale. And exhale. Again, just flow with your own breath rhythm. like the end of a day in a desert caravan with that music we're all on our Persian rugs doing our yoga exhale 
and let's switch our sides and really start nice and loose the shoulders open and then inhale breathe all the way up to your fingers and exhale just letting it flow looking up looking down Almost everything that I do has been adapted from things that we do on the floor or standing up in yoga, um, regular classic yoga poses. Right now we're going to try one called gate pose, which I know no one, none of you have ever seen with a chair before, but here's how it works. So I'm going to have one cheek on the chair and I'm holding very securely over here with this hand. I'm going to stick one leg out. The way that I always did this before was we just go out at a right angle here. But I've since learned that your hip sockets are actually rotated a little bit forward. So we go back maybe 42 degrees instead of 45 degrees. And the classic version is to have your foot grounded on the outside. But if that's uncomfortable, just turn your foot out. That's fine. And sit nice and tall as you bring this hand up. Then exhale. Let's slide down that leg. Try to keep some space in this hip as you come up and over the space. Like you see those signs on the back of trucks. This vehicle makes wide turns. Come up and over so you don't jump the curb. You could look at it that way. Open your chest toward the heart a little more. And from here, let's drop the hand to the back of the head and we'll inhale. Exhale the elbow toward the armpit. Inhale, open it up. And then exhale. And again, just flow with breath. And maybe just two more. Just opening, relaxing, broadening. And exhale, ring it out gently. And then come on up and swing the leg back in. So again, one cheek on, one cheek off. Hold on to your chair while you set it up. Take it about 90% of the way out to the side and get grounded bring this arm up get tall first we want the length in the spine then on exhale we go over and just like the earlier side bends open your side ribs to breath lengthen up you can even think of it as telescoping up out of your pelvis, up and over, maybe finding a little more depth in the posture. And then from here, drop your hand to the back of your head. As you breathe in, open it up and then exhale, elbow toward the armpit. Inhale and open it up and exhale. Inhale and open it up. And exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Just keep flowing now, falling into your own breath rhythm for a few more rounds. back to your chair 
<clears throat> in my seniors classes I always do this exercise so we'll do a few one of the main reasons people end up in nursing homes is because of falls because they don't have the leg strength to get up uh, my poor grandmother my mom was taking care of her and she had to call the fire department in to get her off the floor uh, so we want to keep our strength in our core so we can keep getting up so I was out in West Virginia and I saw all these people trying out those chairs where they hit the button and it goes and then they waddle over and get a beer <clears throat> so we don't want to end up like that because <laughs> pretty soon they won't be able to get out of the chair even with electronic help motorized help so we do this exercise and just do as many of these as you're comfortable with I'm bringing the feet back so I can press into the balls of the feet the widest part of your foot and we bring the weight and we press down into both feet and inhale and open it up and exhale and inhale up and exhale Pressing down, inhale, and exhale. So I'm going for 10. I think that was five. Ocho. Nueve. And yes. Yes. <laughs> that was nice. So, here's how we're going to use the chair for some standing chair yoga. So, I'm going to have the seat facing me, or like so. And please have all four legs of your chair on the mat, which is why we're using mats for chair yoga, otherwise we wouldn't really need it for the sitting part. So I just don't want your chair to slide away from you while we're working. So we're going to make a, a table. So just like we do, we inhale up and then exhale, bending at the hips, bring your hands down to the chair. But keep most of the weight in your legs. And we'll just do a gentle thing to start waking up the legs a little more. I'm gonna move my hands in closer to the middle. Bending the right knee, raise your left arm. And in case you haven't figured it out yet, I'm mirroring you, I'm doing the opposite of what I'm saying. So it's like your parents used to say, do as I say, not as I do. Inhale up. And exhale, bending the left knee, inhale up, and exhale, and inhale, and exhale, inhale, and exhale, let's go up a little more and just stay here for a couple of breaths, relax your shoulders, open from your heart to your fingertips. Let's bring it down and all the way up. And bring it down. So I'm going to bring the right foot up a little closer to the chair, step the left foot back, turn it to the side a little bit so you can get the heel down. We're going to do a a chair version of Arda Hanumanasan. The story is that Hanuman leaped over the Indian Ocean to Ceylon to save the princess. So he leaped over and stretched back, moving his sit bones back into the back heel. And then the hips bring you back to that lunge. Exhale. Just stretching that front leg, keeping the ball of the foot down a little bit. Inhale, shifting the hips forward, 
Shifting the hips back on exhale. Inhale and exhale. Now from here, we're gonna do something called revolved triangle. So bring that front foot under the chair a little more. Take the back foot hand, place it on the center of the chair seat. Get your weight heavily in the back foot and then reach up your right arm. You guys got it. This is beautiful. Usually there's somebody in the room that does this backwards, but not this time. Gotta take this show on the road. Relax your shoulders, reach up. And exhale, float your hand back to the chair. Step up and switch feet. Inhale and exhale back, belly sinking into the thigh. Inhale, exhale, hips back, grounding into that back heel, getting a little calf stretch as well. Inhale, relaxing the shoulders, keeping the heart open as you come forward. And let the hips carry you back. Let the hips bring you forward. Exhaling back. Inhale. Exhale. And now staying here with the leg as straight as it will agree to. And bringing your right hand closer to the center of the chair seat so the chair doesn't tip. I'm gonna reach the left hand up. The front leg arm goes up. Shoulder blades down your back. How much can you open to receive this posture? Relax. Back heel grounded. And float that hand back to the chair. And step up. And knees bent, sweep the hands back. Come all the way back up. Exhale, hands back to your heart. This is called Samastiti. It means equal standing. Balance left to right, back to front. Both shoulders equally relaxed. Coming to ground. So coming back to your table pose. Standing table. I'm going to sink my hips into the balls of the feet. Feet parallel. And then when you come up, lift the heels. And exhale. Sit down into the balls of your feet. Keep the shoulders relaxed. And then please come back to your table and bring your feet closer together, closer to the middle of your mat, feet parallel. So I'm gonna bring the hands a little away from the edge as well for stability. And raising up your left leg, maybe reaching with the right arm. Keep the weight on the feet, not in the chair. Let the right foot carry your weight. And you can just raise the leg and keep both hands on the chair if you need to, that's fine. All the weight in the standing leg. And then bring it back down. And get grounded. Shift all of your weight to the other foot, raising the opposite leg. And 
left arm reaches out over the chair. And breathe. This is called sunbird, or some teachers call it bird dog. For obvious reasons. And then please bring it down. And again, bring your hips back over your feet. And we'll just do a little Hawaiian yoga. And reverse it. <clears throat> so one of the most popular pose, probably the most popular pose in modern yoga today is downward facing dog. You cannot have a yoga class without downward facing dog. It is the law. So I'm going to show you how to do that with a chair. And it, fe it feels great, by the way. I had a, I used to belong to a bicycle club for a long time, and we had a little yoga stretch session at the end. We would do it with our hands on the car in the parking lot at the end of the ride. It was great. So we're going to go here and just walk back, keeping the weight in your feet and all the way back stretching back shoulders away from your ears and just let your hands rest lightly on the chair breathe your hamstrings should be a little looser now after the different stretches we did for them today. And then please walk back up to your chair and roll up. So we cannot have a yoga class of any kind, chair or otherwise, without having balance practice. Usually when I say that in class, everyone groans, but... So here's how we'll do it. You can, you can just stand sideways to your chair. I'm just going to do it like this, so you can see. So I'm just going to do a basic tree, tree-type pose. And so you want the, the... Here, I'll just do it here, because I think everybody's getting more confused. I'll just do it like this. And we're going to do it here with the hand on the calf. And let's reach the outside arm up. So this is called leaning. This is not balancing. So we're looking to bring all the weight into that standing leg. And maybe, Maybe you lift your hand off the chair for a second or not. The chair is right there if you need it. Shoulder blades down your back, chest open. Draw this knee open. Grounding into the center of the ball of your foot. Letting your balance radiate outward. And then see if you can float out of it with good control as you come back. Nice. You guys are hired. Let's turn around and do the other side. <clears throat> so let's bring it up. Bring the outside arm up first. Find your balance. And maybe raise the second hand a little or a lot. Float your hands back to the heart, float your leg back to the floor. <clears throat> so there's a, a yoga teacher named Sean Korn. And she's very famous and she's been on the cover. Have, please have a seat again, bring your chair back. She's been on the cover of countless magazines and yoga magazines. Then I got this video of hers back when they had videotape. Is anybody old enough to remember that? I will admit to it. 
and she's doing her tree pose and she fell out of the pose and this is a person who was doing a high production video and uh, she could have edited it and made herself look perfect <laughs> and she didn't so the message was that you know what we all fall out of balance poses as part of the practice and so ever since then I've been a fan of hers let's just close our eyes for a moment it's okay one of the great things that the great teacher of teachers Krishnamacharya gave us is the idea that the yoga should fit the body not the body should fit the yoga Even if you're bedridden, there's some kind of yoga that you can do. You do as much as you can, you just keep coming to the practice. That's the idea. So with your eyes closed now, again, come back to that feeling of what it is to be alive in your body. in your sit bones hands resting deeply on your lap feet resting deeply in the floor your whole body open to breath so we're not going to do a long shavasana now because in just a few minutes we'll be doing yoga nidra which is basically a very deep longer form of shavasana so please join me with your hands at the heart loka samasta sukino bhavantu this is an ancient Vedic prayer which in part means May all beings find joy. May they all find radiant health. May they find inner peace in the knowledge of their true identity and the knowledge that we all are part of creation itself. Om Shanti 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 Om Peace 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 Please open your eyes. Namaste, everyone. Thank you for joining for, for chair yoga. And I think we're taking a short break. And we'll be doing yoga nidra. Uh, so.